Hello, in this video I'll be showing you how to assess whether a time series seems to follow a random walk. Uh, I'm using the gas use data from my house over a period of 30 days and again it's in hundreds of cubic feet uh, in natural gas and I'm going to start this process of first making a time series plot out of the natural gas data. So our first check to help us determine whether a time series is a random walk is does the series meander? So we can make a time series plot to check that. Okay, so I insert, scatter, connect the points and uh, I'll paste this near the top here. Let's shrink it a little bit. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the grid line, so I'll do a little bit of editing. Click on the grid lines, hit the delete key, rescale the x-axis, format axis. Let's go 0 to 30 by increments of 7. Let's rescale the y-axis, right click, format axis. Let's go 2 to 9 by increments of 1. Under number, let's get rid of the excess decimal place. Uh, add axis titles, layout, axis horizontal below. This is our day index primary vertical rotated, this is gas use, and that's good enough to check the meandering aspect. Okay, so meandering means points close together in time tend to be close together in value, or height in this case. So we can see, for example, at 20 and 21, here's two points that are very close together in time, one day apart, and they're also almost the same height. So you can see that tends to be true for many points, but this is not true. From 21 to 22, it's kind of far apart. Here's from 7 to 8. Here's from uh, day 3 to day 4. Kind of far apart. So there are some days that are quite far apart. In general, it kind of has the meandering aspect, though. Points close together in time tend to be close together in uh, value. Okay, uh, number two is the do the differences form a random process. Okay, so I need to calculate the differences. I'll create a new column here. I insert just so I have a little extra space. I'm making a column of diffs or differences. So differences take the current value minus the previous value and that's it. So we have no difference for the first point because we had nothing to compare it to. So for point two, day two, I say equal current minus previous and double click the lower right corner and I get all the differences. So how do we determine if these form a random process? Well we learned a couple of techniques. Um, we should make a time series plot out of it. So I'm going to highlight my day index, press on the control key, skip over my gas values and highlight the differences from the bottom. Include that empty cell. Insert, scatter, connect the points. Uh, again, a little bit of cleaning. Uh, I'm going to rescale the y-axis, uh, format axis. We'll start at 3 and end at 4 by increments of 1. No decimal place necessary. Uh, I want it to cross that negative 3. So down here, under axis options, horizontal axis crosses at, let's make that negative 3. That way the points are not interfering with the numbers, the day index. Right click on the x axis format. Let's rescale again to 30 uh, by increments of 7 for the 7 days of the week. And uh, a random process would randomly fluctuate around a constant level. We don't know what that constant level is yet, but there is an average to these points. Uh, just eyeballing this, it looks like the series could reasonably be random here. This, this plot of differences. If that's the case, then this is a random walk. Okay, I'll just add a couple of more um, gas, a couple of more titles. Uh, day index again. Okay, and I'll shrink this to kind of match the same size as this plot over here. Okay, 
Now, we could do more formal assessment on this, right? Eyeballing it, it looks like it could be random. But if you wanted to more formally assess this, you could do control charts, an eye chart with the Western Electric Zone test, um, or you could do a runs test. And I'm not sure what the result would be. I won't take the time to do that. Uh, in previous videos, you saw how you could do control charts and a runs test. So I'm just going to eyeball this and say, yeah, it looks reasonably random, and therefore we have more support for a random walk. The last thing we can check here is, uh, does the standard deviation of the differences say is is the standard deviation of the differences smaller than the standard deviation of the original series if so then we would say support for a random walk okay so we can do that easily enough go data data analysis descriptive stats press ok highlight these two columns labels in the first row Output range, let's show that right down here. Summary statistics, and press OK. There we go. And I'll just quickly clean this up a bit. And we'll focus on the numbers that we want to. Uh, we don't need this part. Right click, delete, shift cells left. Yep. And I shifted my graph over. And then I'll get rid of some extraneous statistics here. And let's format to like two decimal places. Okay, and this is my standard deviation. Okay, so uh, here's the average difference. So if we were doing some forecasting, we need that number. And if you want to do some forecast intervals, you need the standard deviation of the differences. Well, we're focusing on these two numbers anyway right now to help us judge if this original series could be a random walk. The standard deviation of the differences is smaller than the standard deviation of this series. So yes, we have more support for random walk. Generally, this would be substantially smaller, but at least it's smaller. Okay, and then finally, uh, we don't have any fit here, so I can't do the root mean square error statistic to measure quality of fit. For random walk, it's really about forecasting. So I'll quickly show you how you can do a point forecast. So let's point forecast a point forecast for gas use of, let's say, day, um, I'll say day 34. We're going to use uh, the formula. Let me see if I can create this quickly. I'm using Microsoft Equation Editor. And I type uh, C, and I want to do subscript T. Actually, before I do that, oh yeah, now CT plus L is the general formula, is equal to last known value of the series, which we call C sub capital T plus L, the number of time periods into the future I want to forecast, uh, times Y times uh, the average, uh, sorry, L times the average difference, or L bar. Okay, so my forecast, I need to put a little hat over that to indicate it's not an actual value. So that's the formula I'm using. So here's what I'll do. Uh, so I say equal, last known value of the series, right there is 2.8. So I'll say 2.8 plus L is four time periods into the future, times the average uh, change is right here, negative 0.11, and my answer is 2.344. So there was a slight downward trend, according to this model. Uh, the random walk model predicts that the gas use will go down on average by 0.11, 100 cubic feet per day. So four days into the future, this is my forecast. 234 cubic feet. Okay, that's it.